Rechnerthesis. Um, the title is a bit unhandy. I in, intern I call the project ORPSOC 2 DSL. It's a yeah. My name is Martin Schulze. I am a student at the Cologne University of Applied Sciences. And maybe you will have answered some questions and I will see how the mailing is. Thank you. I want to give a short overview. My motivation um, is the first thing I, I want to tell you. It, um, the solution I found for me, I will, uh, I will do a short demo and yeah, there's a lot to do. At the university, I learned about the NEOS 2 processor of Altera. And when we loaded this processor to the FPGA, we had, on, had, had the um, window telling us, uh, OK, if you unplug this, it will run one hour. And um, so I, I looked around and found the open risk. Yeah, and got the processor and Linux running on my board and made a little motherboard with a serial controller and SD card and wondered if I could boot Linux from SD card and no. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't able to. There were too much questions at this point. I began to look at the wishbone inter implementation and uh, the top level entity and got more and more confused. And I think at, the at this point there was a board implementation in the OpSoc uh, project with just serial interface and memory interface. And um, I tried to add an SD card interface, but I failed. And this is my thinking of the config configuration process at this point. With version 3 of OPSAC, it's way better. I'm really impressed. And But this, at, at the point I started, it was a lot of manual work, adding one single IP core, the configuration was um, distributed over many lines and many files. You had to um, patch the wishbone arbiters and the top level entity and the tickle scripts for the pins. And you needed a lot of detail knowledge. This is nothing you can teach to a student at university that is new to embedded systems. My teacher teaches embedded systems at, the, at a very, um, he gives a very high overview about um, processors and yeah, you cannot teach it in one semester at university. I found a solution with a DSL using Xtext. It's an Eclipse plugin, and you can write a um, language definition and get a graphical editor for this language and um, syntax highlighting. And uh, yeah, the very log files are generated, and I get. IDE integration. So I will show you some Eclipse now. Uh, this is a, an Eclipse I, I used to um, define the language 
it's actual um, Bacchus Noah form, extended Bacchus Noah form, and you will find the yeah, all, all things I defined here in the language. And you easily can start the new language workbench from the first Eclipse and I'm still trying to get this out and make Eclipse plugins that you can simply download. So, um, you have a yeah, smart syntax. You, um, for every generate block, one system is generated with all um, needed files in there. It's the, it's the version 2 tree, parts of the mirrored here, and yeah. You can add a core and add internal connections or bus interfaces to the core and you can add pinout for a specific generated system. So you, you can add another system for Xilinx, for example, and do a, a define other pins and will, it will generate both at the same time. And it's the, the generation is really fast. The do a clean and yeah, it's done. The files are here again. <laughs> and one big problem I ran into is that I made very big, um, very big uh, methods in extend, and yeah, it needs a lot of cleanup now. So the main goals were the main goals were to show the benefit of a DSL. This is improved communication of a system's architecture and you have the configuration at one single place, the whole configuration, and you can version this configuration and um, yeah. The DSL definition itself is, yeah, I, I could say it is done, but I think it will never be really done. And the generator for the files is almost done, but it, the generated system is not working at the moment. Yeah, the, the DSL itself has uh, needs some more development. There are workarounds for interrupts, for example. And I have to finish the generator to get a baseline and then rework the architecture of the generator itself. There are some Eclipse features that should be added, the validation, code validation of the DSL that you can, so, the, so that you can get better error messages and warnings. And auto formatting is one uh, big yeah, thing someone could do. <laughs> and auto completion for, for pins for example, doesn't work at the moment, but it could be added. There is some artwork to do with the outline in Eclipse. You, I think I switch, switch back. Um, you get an outline for the system 
like every um, like in every programming language, programming language, and it's a good overview of a complete system you're generating. And this little pictures are not pretty, <laughs> just edited for demonstration purposes. Yeah, integration of of the build process into Eclipse, so that you can press a play button at Eclipse and it will do the complete um, build and you get the bitstream out. That would be great, I think. And the deployment of the Eclipse plugins to a web location where users can just add the location to, the, to Eclipse and install it from there. That's one more topic. I have to look into it. Thank you very much. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, did you consider the IP exact way of doing this? So, so IP exact is an is an industry driven thing, I think, which is describing top level your cores, the registers, and things like that. So it goes a little bit deeper than I think what you've developed here, but um, and way more complex. Yeah, yeah I, I guess it's a lot more complex, but um, it, you could have perhaps chosen a subset of that to implement to achieve the same thing, and that that would have been really good. Also, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, the difference is that IP exact is an XML scheme app, so you tie into XML way of doing things. Here you generate your own language. Yeah. So it's more readable for the human actually. It's, it's, it's with, with XML you need to more well, readable for human, writable for human, and uh, you you can tell another person here I have a car and uh, yeah, you can tell here. I have a car, it's a um, memory controller and it is a bus slave to the instruction bus and it is pin out for, yeah, yeah to, sure. to the actual RAM. I'm not an IP exact expert, um, I assume similar sort of stuff can be done with that. Well, I absolutely, guess. I mean, I would say that having a graphical and a nice language is a great thing, but having a totally different intermediate representation from several of the existing industry standards where the, um, I mean, I would have thought you should have looked at IP exacts and seen what it has and then had thought, how will I produce a nice language of DSL that will help me be, yet still be compatible with all the IP exact stuff that there is. Yeah, I, I have not heard of this before. Well, well, I mean, there are several plugins for Eclipse which handle um, like the exact or, or similar sort of system on chip. Yeah, I suspect it wouldn't be a lot of work to uh, add support for IP exact to this. What did IP exact used to be called? Oh, it used to be called Spirit. Spirit. And Spirit, Spirit, Spirit is the is now just an implementation of IP. IP exact is the standard. It's a consortium. consortium. Oh, Spirit consortium, right? Yes. Yeah. IP exact is the standard. But IP, I mean, my, whenever I've looked at IP exact, when you come and put it in the real world, it turns out to sort of not actually very practical. So I, mean, I think there's, David's right, you need to look at IP exact and understand how your work fits with it. Yeah. But I, I'm, I've never yet seen a solution with IP exact that actually works for anything useful. Um, I have another question, which is, so I mean, the, the sort of converted evolution going on here, because the Orpsoc V3 stuff said the big problem is configurability. You said the big problem is configurability. Yes. So this is obviously how that, the obvious thing, and this is the great thing about open sources, you've got two solutions in the yeah. internet, and the question is, how do those two come together yeah. and help each other? I, um, at, the po at the moment I started this project, I... I just heard about there would be another version of Orpsoc, but it was not ready, and I had to start. I had to start with my bachelor thesis and just chose to use version two. But I think it's pretty easy to um, integrate this into Orpsoc version three. Yeah, I have to agree. I say I haven't seen this until now. Uh, I've heard about your work, and 
I think it's, it would be a great front end. I think it would be fit together really good. Yeah. I mean, this takes care of the part of like top level generation that we talked about yesterday. Uh, and it can output all the pin mappings in a nicer way and things like that. The boring parts that no one wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, it's interesting. So it's, it's fun. And I, I, I will um, go on with this. I have some time at university. Um, spare time, but can I, I can spend it, and I think I will spend it to this project. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you can add a GUI on, on top of that. Yeah, yeah you, you can. You can. Uh, I I met uh, uh, a guy at the EclipseCon. No, not EclipseCon. Uh, a, a conference in, in Bonn, Germany, last year, and he said you can easily add a graphical editor for this language, for, for any language in Xtext. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, click around and put, put your system together and just press a play button and it will come out yeah. completely. That's my dream. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Martin. Um, <laughs>